I've been living inside of my RV that I have here for about a year, and I have considered in the past refinancing it as a primary residence. I'm Haley from RV Pioneers, and today I will be going over a few factors that you may want to consider before financing your RV as your primary residence. The first thing that you should know is you do not have to do it. You can live inside of your RV and have the loan that you got through the RV company or through a credit union or any loan bank that you want to use without any repercussions. Second thing is your loan payment will be cheaper because you're basically converting your loan into a mortgage, which extends over a longer period of time. Plus you get some tax deductions on mortgages that you wouldn't get with a RV loan, but you are prolonging that loan over a longer period of time, thus paying probably more interest than you would financing it as an RV. So I don't see a huge difference in saving money that way, but some people might, depending on how long your loan is and how much your monthly payment is. The third thing, and probably why most people go down this path, is insurance. Insuring an RV that you're living in can be pretty tricky because they don't want you living in it. I did a lot of research and the insurance company that I found that will insure me without it being my primary residence is State Farm. It might be different from state to state. Either way, the home insurance and the RV insurance are both going to be more expensive than standard home insurance because it is an RV that you drive around. So you'll still need to insure it as an RV, plus have your home insurance if you have it as a residence. Or if you're doing like I do, I have my RV insurance plus my personal property insurance, which basically covers all of my electronics and everything that I have in here, basically everything really expensive. And then I also have rental insurance that it covers all of the basic stuff that you get with rental insurance, like your clothes and furniture and just basically anything that you put inside of your RV. Another thing that you may want to consider before making an RV your primary residence that you live in is maintenance in an RV is going to be much more expensive than regular home maintenance. Things tend to break a lot more often in RVs because everything's kind of crammed into weird spots and things are shaking around while you're driving. So you're gonna have to fix things a lot more often. Plus the repair bills are quite a bit more expensive and you have to take them to a shop. Like people aren't going to come to your RV to fix it most of the time anyway. The last thing that I would consider before making an RV your primary residence is receiving mail. If you're staying inside of an RV, RV park most of the time, you can usually get packages delivered to that RV park, but receiving basic mail such as your bills and things like that, you're probably going to need some sort of PO box, especially if you're moving around quite a bit. You're not going to move around your mailing address that often. I use a UPS box and I can actually use this as my primary address. Don't confuse that with a USPS box. You can't use that as a primary address, UPS box. <laughs> and this is actually the address that I have on my driver's license and the IRS even identifies it as my primary address. So that's what I do. And I think what most other people do. You could also use a friend or family member's address as your primary address. And usually people don't have a problem with it. I don't really understand why they would have a problem with it, especially if you're only sending like bills and junk mail to their house. Personally, I did not convert my RV to my primary residence. I just left it as an RV and have the UPS box as my primary address. I just think it's easier this way. I don't think the tax deductions are totally worth it, but if you are buying something a little more expensive than what I got, it may be worth it to you, especially if you can't afford to pay that short-term loan monthly. You can turn it into a mortgage and have it paid over time where your monthly payments will be smaller. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content.